Dr. Otto Octavius is perhaps one of the most iconic comic book supervillains to date, taking on a mentorship type of role to Peter Parker before falling into villainy as a result of his mechanized arms hijacking his mind. With his redemption finally complete at the end of the film Spider-Man 2 and culminating with his noble self-sacrifice, it has largely been believed that his character arc was completed at the end of his movie. Recently, however, it has come to light that not only would he be returning in Spider-Man No Way Home, but Alfred Molina himself has confirmed that this is the very same iteration of Doc Ock from Spider-Man 2, confirming that he is not a variant, and that his story would be resuming where it left off all the way back in 2004. This has left Marvel fans with several questions, including why is he returning to villainy, where is his story and where did it go following the events of 2002, what is the current status of his inhibitor chip, and so on. Well hopefully today guys we have some answers, so stick with us, watchers of the Marvel Multiverse, as we delve into the theory that Otto's inhibitor chip may have actually been repaired for the events of No Way Home in a rather unexpected and clever way. First though, we are giving away a Spider-Man Far From Home highly detailed hot toy. To enter, all you have to do is like this video, subscribe to the channel with notifications on, and let me know in the comments down below which of the three Spider-Men you are most excited to see out of Tom, Toby, and Andrew. Now, let's continue on. The most important part of the inhibitor chip to keep in mind during this theory is that it wasn't designed to fight off the mechanical arms to Otto's brain. It was simply meant to act as a shield to his brain, choking the influence of the arms AI and prohibiting them from reaching his brain. When it was destroyed, the AI of the arms was allowed to reach Otto's brain uninhibited and influence their control over him, leading to his descent into villainy that we saw throughout Spider-Man 2. It's the arms, not actually Otto. At the end of Spider-Man 2, Otto Octavius was actually able to enforce his will over the arms if only momentarily, likely because of the fact that they were slightly damaged. Therefore, he was able to take control of them if only for a brief moment, the moment where he destroyed his machine and sacrificed himself. In the recent No Way Home promotional material, however, Otto's allegiance seems to be in question, as he is seen fighting against Spider-Man before uncovering his true identity and realizing that he is not the variant of the webhead that he is familiar with. He then seems to lend a more helpful insight into what is to come, and there is even a shot that seems to show Doc Ock being thrown from a building by Electro, indicating that the two supposed villains might be in conflict for some reason or another. During the fight on the bridge, it is implied that the mechanical arms are back in control based on the red lights at their centers, which were largely indicative of who was in control through the Raimi films. When it glowed white, Otto was in control, but when they glow red, the arms are in complete control. Seeing as Otto likely did not have the time or resources to repair his inhibitor, inhibitor chip upon escaping from the river into the multiverse, it makes sense as to why they would have regained control. But then the question still remains as to how exactly does Otto regain his own influence over the arms? We learn from recent dialogue through promotional material that Otto and the arms are still looking for his machine, meaning that the arms and Otto himself may not have even remembered that he destroyed it at the end of Spider-Man 2. Because the personality, the pure personality of Otto Octavius and the personality of the arms and Otto are two completely separate people, or at least have different memories of what occurred and what went down in the river. But again, throughout No Way Home, why does Otto seem to change his allegiance? One popular fan theory suggests that it's actually Tony Stark's nanotechnology which frees Otto's mind from the grip of the arms. And there is a compelling case to be made for this intriguing fan theory. First, we know that the AI programs can combat one another in the MCU. We saw this precedent being set when Ultron defeated Jarvis in Age of Ultron, and again when the disembodied mind of Arnim Zola combated Infinity Ultron's algorithm in the What If series, proving that the AI programs are capable of not only fighting one another, but defeating one another. And it was stated in Spider-Man 2 that Otto's arms do in fact function via artificial intelligence. Throughout Avengers Infinity War, we were given our first up close look at Tony Stark's nanotechnology as he ventured across the galaxy in his Mark 50 suit and fought against the likes of Thanos and the members of the Black Order. We have also seen Tony Stark's affinity for writing incredibly complex artificial intelligence programs since the very beginning of his MCU debut, and we have seen how they interact with not only him, but his suits. We know that Jarvis and Friday are integral parts of the suit's functionality, as they serve as analysis for Tony, deducing solutions to various problems and on 
many occasions, Friday directly assists in piloting the Mark 50 suit. Jarvis has even piloted entire suits on his own, as we saw during the climactic showdown of Iron Man 3, showcasing just how powerful his artificial intelligence programs truly are. Peter's Stark suit has also been equipped with their own AI units in the past, as Karen assists Peter throughout the events of Homecoming and the subsequent release of Far From Home revolved around Peter's taking back the Edith program, from of course the villainous Mysterio. Therefore, it stands to reason that his Iron Spider suit would be equipped with a similarly powerful artificial intelligence program, perhaps even Edith herself following the events of Spider-Man Far From Home. So why is this important? Due to Tony Stark's affinity for writing incredibly advanced artificial intelligence programs, it is not unreasonable to believe that his programs would be among the strongest on Earth, and very few systems in the MCU have shown to be superior to Tony's. If they were ever able to rival the AI within Ox Arms, it's highly likely that they may be capable of overpowering Ox Arms and freeing his mind. This could explain why the Iron Spider nanotechnology seems to bond with Otto rather well though we may have been under a previous misconception as to how it first started. The widely accepted explanation is that Otto was utilizing the technology to augment his own powers, and we see him stripping Peter of the nanoparticles throughout the course of their conflict. But what if there's another explanation? Is it possible that the nanotechnology is actually bonding with that of Otto's arms, and is either at the behest of Tom Holland's Peter Parker, or perhaps even on their own accord autonomously, in order to free Otto's mind from their clutches? Or could this turn up to be a happy coincidence after the AI of the arms and the nanotech bond with one another? This would imply that some of the footage in the trailer is not entirely accurate, or was reframed to lead fans to believe of an alternate explanation in what is exactly occurring here. But we know that Marvel has a particular affinity for doctoring trailers for their liking, in order to mislead audiences and hide vital plot details from the prying eyes of avid theorists. This would mitigate the need to explain why and how Otto was able to master control of Tony Stark's nanotech so easily, as well as provide a sound explanation as to why he was able to take a more protagonistic role without breaking the established logic of both the Raimiverse and the MCU. Using nanotechnology in the AI embedded within to stave off the corruption of Otto's arms would allow him to stay on the side of heroism, and would also provide a sound explanation for Peter Parker's various uniform changes and alterations. Based on the footage we have seen so far, it appears as if Peter will lose his Iron Spider suit relatively early on in the film, and will have to resort to other means of making a new uniform. It is implied that the bridge scene takes place relatively early on in the movie, and there are a few details to support this. The first is that Peter is in a suit that could very reasonably be worn in court, indicating that this may be towards the end of his exoneration before the second act kicks into high gear. It also seems to act as the introduction of Doc Ock who is set to take a much more significant role throughout the course of the film. And if the bridge scene takes place early on in the movie, given these details, then he could lose the Iron Spider suit near the beginning of the second act when the villains are just starting to reappear and come through the cracks of the multiverse. Upon realizing that Auk needs the nanoparticles more than himself, he could sacrifice the Iron Spider suit and provide a feasible explanation as to why he doesn't reconstruct it and continue to use it later on in the film. Instead, resorting to the suit we've seen in the past in the recent promotional material. Or, Auk could reconstruct the suit entirely and give it back to Spider-Man, which may be why we see variations or at least pieces of the Iron Spider suit in play in later costumes worn by Holland. But anyway, my friends, what do you think of this theory? Do you think the nanotech is actually aiding Auk in reclaiming control of his mind? Or do you think there's another explanation entirely? As always, my friends, thank you guys so much for watching the channel. Hit that subscribe button to assemble and join our team, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Are you interested in buying yourself some Marvel merch? Some amazing hoodies with your favorite character on it? Like Spider-Man, Loki, and Venom. Go click the link in my description box now, and get some awesome discounts from 20% up to 60% off. They offer you free worldwide shipping on orders over $39.90. So, what are you waiting for? Link in the description.